Hi everybody, my name is Joe Summers, and along with my wife Tanya, we own and operate Chalili. Today I wanted to share with you a technique to protecting your fish from the dreaded mink during the winter. Here in our region, we have a mink problem. Typically, the mink only come around during the winter. Sometimes they show up other times of the year. Supplies that we have to make a mink cage, PVC pipe. I choose the three quarter inch. Some plumbing fittings, hacksaw, tape measure. This particular customer wanted their cage to be four foot by three foot by three and a half foot. So basically we're just making a cube. I'll show you now all the different steps. So all we got to do is take some measurements, grab our hacksaw and cut away. So now I have all my poles cut and all I have to do is start the assembly. These fittings are perfect to make our corners. So all I'm going to do is put our corner brackets in and then follow up by the sides and finally repeat at the top. The only reason I paint the fish cage is so that it's less ugly in the pond. I think the white pipes are just fine, but I like to paint them black just so that it's a little less unsightly. Once all the paint on our bones are dry, then I like to get the skin. The skin is just a, a netting material, plastic generally, and we use this um, in the landscape all the time for deer fencing or uh, netting to keep out critters. Uh, the heavier the gauge the plastic, the stronger it's going to be, the longer it will last. So we're going to stretch that skin across these bones and then attach it with zip ties. One of the last things we have to do is decide if we want to cut the end of our cable tie off. So we've built our cube, we've stretched our skin, we've secured everything with our cable ties, and personally I like to trim them off. I think having all those extra flaps stick around is just a little unsightly. A word of caution, when you do cut it, it becomes a little bit sharp, so any of the fish on the outside of the cage may become injured. So you get to decide whether or not you want to trim that off or leave it intact. In this finished example, you can see that the cage is built. It's basically a cube. I use the uh, PVC as our bones and the plastic fencing as our um, skin. I do use uh, one, I leave one corner open because when I put the fish in here, I put the cage down in the water first and then go about catching the fish. If I leave this corner open, then I will simply put the fish inside the corner. After we're all done, this corner will also get cable tied or zip tied down. As you can see, I put cable ties about every four or six inches, depending on your fish. If you have big fish, maybe you space it out a little further. If you have little fish, maybe you put them a little bit closer. But basically, I'm making sure that the fish can't get out and the mink can't get in. Some people put the uh, mink cage completely submerged. Some people like to have the top sticking out. I don't think it matters to the fish one way or the other. Here in St. Louis, we keep our fish in here sometime in September, October, sometimes as late as November. It really just depends on when we feel like the mink is going to show up. And they stay in there until we do a spring cleaning, which sometimes isn't until March or April. I hope this little technique helps you figure out a way to keep those mink from eating our precious fish. I thank you for watching. Check us out at Facebook, Instagram, or Chalili.com.